many attackers made it clear that sexual violence and mutilation was a punishment for belonging to a particular political party or ethnic group. Like the so-called revenge attacks, which targeted innocent people, not combatants. How are we dealing with that? Not at all, it seems. Yet these are very serious crimes. Sexual violence as a tool of conflict is a well-known tool. It terrorizes, it attacks the individual, it attacks the family, it attacks the community. So it's very commonly used in conflict situations. And it is also used as a way to reward combatants. And in the situation of Kenya and the post-election violence, that was no exception. Now the next step is that this sexual violence that has, been, uh, uh, has taken place must be prosecuted. Now when the ICC prosecutes, they prosecute people who are the quote-unquote big fish. These aren't necessarily people who necessarily rate themselves, but if they had a command responsibility, if they were in a position to prevent or punish these crimes, they are responsible for the rapes, whether they themselves raped or not. It's important to understand exactly what crimes the ICC can prosecute. Calling for peaceful mass action, for example, is not illegal. It's a fundamental right. But protesters have individual responsibility not to commit crimes. So what are crimes against humanity? Priscilla Nyokabi from Kituo Chasheria explains they don't just harm the victim. They offend our very sense of humanity. Uh, mass murder. It's like killing many people. Mass murder. The penal code says if you kill one person, you'll go to court. The same applies for two, three people. Or if you go crazy and shoot four to six people, you'll be taken to court. But if you kill many people with a motive, that is going into one house, kill, jump two houses, kill in the next house, jump three, kill in the following house, you have killed many people because of the way they look, their tribe, religion, or political affiliation. Then you've committed crimes that cannot be tried locally. The international community takes such crimes seriously and you would have offended the whole world. Some crimes are done in such a savage manner, it's difficult to comprehend, like disemboweling a pregnant woman. The Waki report describes how a man watched as the brother was killed. How a father watched as the entire family was killed. Or a woman who was raped in front of her husband and children just because she was from a particular tribe or political party. Some did not even vote, yet they were believed to have political affiliations. So if you commit such crimes, then you have committed crimes against humanity. Uh, crimes against humanity. So we can't defend people on the basis of who they are, where they come from, or what they did for their own. Because that is the very root of impunity. At the end of the day, it's about justice for individuals. Uh, it's nothing to do with the tribe, because I've heard quite a number of uh, my colleagues in parliament say that our son, our community, it is nothing to do with the community. I like the approach of William Ruto that I will defend myself. I like the approach of uh, Ambassador Mutaura that yes, I will cooperate fully, because I think that is a way to nurture and strengthen rule of law and the culture of accountability in our country. Yet we hear it all the time, the same old song sung in many different ways. Mm, I'm not quite happy about Uhuru Kenyatta Pintea and Mutaura. It's not yeah, for real. I'm a Kikuyu, but I'm not being tribalistic, I'm a Kenya, but I'm feeling it quite because he was too concerned about his people that Yani Wakikuyu, what's happening? My people go take your people back home, but not inciting, go fight this and this and this. So one thing they should look about over Kenyatta for real. At Kubale Kamwe, Kwambaruta Peleko Uko He is an innocent man. Yeah. Mbona Mutu Ambaye Hana Atia Apeleko Hek. Kuna Janso to kienda Janso la Janso cha aliazisha vita. There is a source where the whole trouble came from. This is a war between the Kikuyus and the Kalenjin. And they should not involve other Kenyans. 
If they want to go and find their own country, they can go and find their own country to fight there. Because they are just involving us for no reason. We as the Kenyans, we were, we were fighting for election. But with them, they are fighting because of champions and other things which they did during Kenyatta time. We don't know. So as Kenyans, we are telling them, they should feel we are like brothers. This is our nation. And they should not feel like they are important than the other Kenyans. When a tribal leader claims he's protecting his community, that's dirty politics. He should be helping us get water, education, jobs and health care. His work is not to protect us. There is a ministry assigned to carry out that job. That kind of thinking undermines national unity. We should not be protected because we are Kikuyu, but because we are Kenyans. Other tribes like the Samburu, El Molo and Luos should be protected like the Kikuyus. Leaders do not have the right to protect their community. Protecting them means calling the police and going to court when their rights have been violated. He cannot say he's protecting them by killing people from another tribe. There's nothing moral about that. It's a crime against humanity. Before the ICC made its move, people all over the country were demanding to be heard. The screen we have, which we are calling the beast, is a spectacle. Uh, generally speaking, many it seems the government officials have, uh, would like Kenyans to forget the crisis that happened during the elections and after the elections and pretend nothing has happened or nothing, everything is normal, everything's are back, back to normal as they were before. But uh, I think the reality on the ground is different, there's still a lot of tensions, a lot of worries, a lot of unresolved issues. So the content is justice and how do we, can we get justice? I'm sure Mr. Kiai, I will just hear people from Eldoret complain, especially the Kanjin community, they are acquired people. I will just hear you complain that the Somebody was killed because they is also suffered. Like in what the picture the, what the international community is getting is as if we are the ones who caused the suffering. And that is what I need you yourselves to raise. They were paid money to kill. What do you get after killing your neighbor? So, 2012, watoto wetu wawe macho ya kuona ya kwamba ata ukiuwa, utauwa and you language somewhere alone. Na wa matajiri watabaki wa kilala na wewe ukiumia pala mbapo watako meenda kuumia. Mimi maoni yangu sana ni hiki tunaitua impunity. Impunity hata hapa Kenya ndiyo hiko na shida hata kuliko katiba. Na hiyo ni maoni yangu. Kwa hivyo ningeoma hata okampo akiweza kumaliza hii kesi tukonayo hata sisi wanainchi nukefuraia sana hata kuliko hii katiba. Now we need to give justice a chance. Let's hear the evidence and see how the ICC works before rushing to our own judgment. Because ending impunity is the responsibility of every Kenyan. Getting justice is not just a process in court. It's about you too. We must rise above that first thought. Don't touch my community. If you really want peace and justice, let individuals take responsibility for their own actions. Don't carry the cross for them. Even better, get involved in what the ICC is doing. Victims and survivors of violence have a right to be represented in the trials by Kenyan or international lawyers registered with the ICC. And ordinary citizens can and should write to the ICC. So make sure your voice is heard. For tomorrow will surely come. <laughs>